All right, so listen. Uh, it's part three of daily number five five two, where we learn to be a better gamer. We're looking at TLO. I want to talk a little bit about this position, where uh, one of the things that I actually have not been talking a lot about, and I probably should have mentioned it eh, right around here, eighteen minutes, when we're actually getting ourselves our setup. We know that we have locked our opponent out of a third. That's one of the fundamental aspects of this contain that we're happy about. So in a sense, our game plan is, as long as we've blocked the third, make sure he doesn't sneak an expansion here, here, or here. These are the three most likely places for a hidden expansion. With these two being way the hell more likely than this one. Uh, as long as we make sure he doesn't get those expansions up, we should be able to slowly get our foothold back in this game because we have a lot more options for expansions. A lot more defensible options for expansions. So during this period, we're not seeing tanks, we're not seeing tanks, we're not seeing tanks. Tanks would be a reason to begin to retreat, to pull back, because he would be able to slowly break through these lines. Um, and... Uh, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Oh yeah, drops. Drops are the other huge thing. So I think TLO did an amazing job with the identification of shutting down at this third, the prevention of that third going down, but the drop aspect is really what is doing all that pain breaking. God, those units are so freaking loud! I don't know what's with the volume control in HOTS, I will never know. One of these days I'm gonna solve it. But either way, this push at the front's going well. The defense at the back's going well. I'm going to turn this down. 10% master volume. Go. It just keeps turning it up. Ah! It's like driving me insane. And, and now it's barely audible. It went from like unbelievably loud to really quiet. Oh my gosh. So enraging. Yeah. So I still think this overinvestment into swarm hosts at some level makes sense. I would much though prefer I think that this would be much stronger if it was drones, spines, and infestors. At some point, starting to exploit this excessive gas is gonna be a huge benefit. The inability to defend simple counter drop attacks like this is just awful. How do you how do you change this? Gain volume during alerts. Hmm. This determines the volume level of other game sounds while alerts are playing. Lower this if you are having trouble hearing alerts over the other game sound. What are response sounds? See you later, voices. Hmm. I have no idea. Giving that a shot. Seeing how it pans out. Still loud. All right. Trying 100%. You know what? We're going to the everyone cam so we don't have to worry about it. I hope not. Bam. I seriously am going to go crazy. Please remind me to email Blizzard and say, why is the sound volume so crazy and all over the place? I'm just dropping the sound volume to like 8%. And it still sounds loud. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how anything works anymore. Ah, TLO continues to push and this all looks good. But again, what's so interesting about a situation like this is that, in fact, the safest spot to expand is generally wherever the units are. I'm actually going to take this concept back to the 12 minute mark. We have this Terran player 
who could expand here, but instead elects to expand here. Why is that? Because that is along the direction of attack. This is uh, what Bomber has been doing on this map to great success, even when this is a half expansion and this is a full expansion. Continues to expand here because it is along the direction of attack and is an easier defense for his units. By the same token, TLO expanding here. Very weird spot to expand to. And this is only really clear when TLO has nothing left and he's sort of retaking this base. But even back here, uh, a little bit too ba far back, even at like 18 minutes, it's still quite clear that with this third denied, and probably after we take this base, that this is the next easiest to defend base. I actually think that the clo that the top three places to expand, actually the top two places to expand is one here and two here. And then probably three would be here. This is probably the third best place to, to take another expansion. Just because it's so dang close to all the units. So now that we have absolutely nothing, this Lost Tab is very close, actually. I know a lot of people like to be like, oh my god, that Swarm Host! The Swarm Host! It's too good! Tilo's just doing a very basic thing very adamantly. He's denying an, a, a third base. He's been doing the same thing all game long. This is much easier to see when we sort of stretch it out over time. At the 18 minute mark, how is he denying a third base? With creep spread. He even Nidus wormed here to cover it. At the 22 minute mark, has the Overlord up here, the Overlord down there. The only place he's not scouting is up here. Just continuing to deny those expansions. When everything was even very stable, he was trying to deny the expansions. And now here, just following the command center, continuing to deny expansions. And it's so nice that even with all this craziness, TLO has done the very basic task of expansion denial super well. <laughs> these things cannot move now. And of course, these things are still incredibly loud. I don't know. I don't get it. All right, guys, the sound's off for today. We're done. We're done with the sound. You're grounded, Master Volume. You're grounded. Sound's been disabled. Oh, what a relief. Oh, oh, that game sounds so crazy. So cray. This is a little bit of an unfortunate situation that we actually cannot leave this particular area. But I still do think that it is a really interesting set of decisions now. Okay, what do we do now? What is the next best set of choices? All questions pretty much relate back to where expansions are going to be going. Given this setup, where is the next most comfortable place for Terran to expand? I would basically say not here. This is probably going to not be it, because we can very easily position our stuff and blast that down. Um, probably here. A little easier um, to set up. Um, this, here, here, basically all the top left area. Bottom, probably not because it's hard to reinforce. Bottom right, probably not because it's also hard to reinforce, but the top left area is basically it. Uh, and probably far away top left locations. We have this covered with the swarm hosts, but um, our Terran buddy will likely have quite a lot of difficulty dealing with um, attacking and defending these back bases. I think that small counterattacks like this work great. I think speed zerglings would be another nice play. I don't mind uh, getting speed at all here. I don't mind teching up to a layer and getting an infestation pit and focusing on our own expansions. Where's the next place we should probably expand to? Um, probably here. This seems very reasonable because if we have here and here, then we instantly have protected this expansion. 
And I'm, if you've watched any number of my other dailies, you've heard me talk like this before. You know, if we take this and this, then that expansion is going to be quite good. And in this and that way and all that jazz. And in this completely psychotic, weird situation, we can still do the same analysis. Next best spot to expand, yeah, definitely bottom right and then bottom mid. Would probably be the order of choices. Yeah, look at that no sound. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, forgive me. Oh, that analysis, I guess, was just so boring. Oh. We still have some of our queenies alive. Marginally concerned about some anti-air coming in, but that's one of the reasons why we were talking a little bit about the infester usage being quite pivotal. One of the first uh, big late game missteps, not checking that, but eventually TLO finds it, so it's not a deal. But Tilo really was able to get into the situation just because he kept denying another base. That, in my eyes, is what it all ended up boiling down to. And the fact that we're getting these exchanges of units versus free units. Infester plus Swarm Host is incredible. Fungal plus Locust, oh yes. Oh, uh-huh. Whole bunch of free units coming in. The Stim, not enough. See you later, Tenku. Tanky. Got him. Got him! Done. Let's take questions. Taking questions. Taking questions. Taking questions. I'm a tired person. I'm feeling quite tired today. Uh, to Lazy Bacon, send me an email. Hmm. Refreshing, 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 refreshing. From Bigalonage, day nine, what could the Terran have done better? I can actually pinpoint the exact moment where I was like, oh, Terran. You're tearing up my heart when I cast you. And when we are apart... Actually, my camera just feels like way off today. I'm having camera problems. Uh, it, it, I feel like it happened right around here at the 14 minute mark, right? So this, this happens and Terran's like, Oh my god. Oh, this is so bad. Why is the sound in this... Why is that so loud? I don't know. But at this point, I can understand a Terran player going, Oh my gosh, Crisis. I like this move. The, the little counterswing. Not a huge counterswing, because what's the worst that happens? The worst that happens is Swarm Hosts arrive, shoot Locusts, and then we stim and run away. That's the worst that could happen. But then, as we step to the 16-minute mark, and all this damage has been dealt, and we zoom to the 18-minute mark, oh, not to the 20-minute mark, as we zoom to the 18-minute mark, and we're getting contained, there was just no attempt to drop by the Terran. What if Terran had taken these and hooked down and this way? What would Zerg have done? What could TLO have possibly done? <laughs> the answer is nothing, damn it! <laughs> Let's actually go to the Terran cam and see how long it took for him to really get aggressive with his drops. So far, it's been... 90 seconds since this contain ended up happening. And we're doing a, a sad little tiny mini drop with some Widow Mines, which will maybe kill some drones, but won't actually really do that much pressure. Still trying to get out. Oh gosh, no dropping, no, no attempts to drop. Um, all right. Okay, here we go. Here's kind of the starts of it, all right. And then a full, literally four minutes after the contain was established by TLO is the first drop of one medevac worth of infantry. And it kills a hatch almost. Or does it kill the hatch? Yeah. I think it... It, it does enough damage to where you're like, Damn, we should have done that earlier! That's the exact, the, the, the period of time. I mean, if your opponent is really swarm host heavy, then get really drop heavy. 
Hmm. Mortal Wombat 420. Do you think Hots will be balanced enough for esports pro level play by the release date? Balance is generally. How do I want to say that? State that. Um, Balance will not be the, uh, how do you say that? Balance is not the design of the game so much it is, as it is the a statement of the behavior of players. If all the uh, Zerg players are playing a certain way that Protoss players can exploit all over the place, then people will say that Protoss is doing better than Zerg, and people might claim that it is imbalanced, but what if all the Zergs just did something different? Like right now, all Zergs go three base without gas against Protoss and Wings of Liberty. You have some players like Lowly who almost never do that and have a really successful career. What if everyone started doing that? Um... So honestly, I think that the game, I think the Hots looks awesome. I have no, there's probably going to be plenty of stuff that no one's expected. I just don't even think it really matters. It's going, it, it there's enough cool stuff and a lot, enough neatness in there that I don't think it will be boring by any means. Um, Eosofo says, Day9, how do you feel about the Terran using Banshees to pick off hosts and or base poking? Um... <laughs> I think in this game there may have been room to get those, but they, Banshees take a really long time and you kind of have to plan to do them. So I always say that there is an incredibly large difference between having a Banshee versus going for Banshees. If the Terran had a Banshee at a number of points, it would have been great, but going Banshees would have severely wounded Terran. If he had gone for Banshees early, like say went Reaper, Widow Mine, and then into Banshees, there would be almost no aggression that Terran could put on at all. Terran probably would have lost to the Swarm Host attack right off the bat. Because um, all the Queens would have come through, the Swarm Host would have broken down the front door because there was not any Marines there, and then the game's done. What if he had gone for this, uh, gone for the, the Marines, and then gotten up the Banshee? Well, I think that there would have been a lot that maybe would have worked, but it would have had to been pre-planned. It would have had to been like, all right, my build order is, you know, Reaper, Widow Mind, uh, two command centers, then three barracks, and then I'm just going to straight up go for Banshees. That's the only way that that would have really happened in time. And there would have been maybe, maybe been, what, two Banshees? Not a lot. Not a huge number of Banshees. So I'm not really feeling it. And then, like, later on down the line after the swarm hosts have been set up outside the front, it's still a lot better to just go straight for the medevac drops. Why? Because we freaking have the medevacs there. So I, yeah, having the Banshee at any point would have been nice, but I think that going for the Banshee would have been <sighs> painful. Although CD Bascu does ask about the if the Terran has more tanks, what would happen there? I um, A lot of Terran players are experimenting with just pure bio widow mine. Um, which it looks like what the barcode was doing here. But I do think the tanks would have definitely made it a lot easier to deal with because tanks are extremely good against um, locusts in practice. <sighs> Blue Dragon Alex asks if Ghost Nuke counter, or if uh, would Ghost Nuke counter the Swarm Host, they do the opposite of counter the Swarm Host. In fact, nukes suck against Swarm Host because the nuke appears the swarm hosts fire and then they unburrow and move away and then the nuke lands and the swarm hosts burrow and there's actually no time lost it's not like you know with a siege tank where it's unseaged and it can't fire during that period and you lose like the four shots or whatever swarm hosts take like what 30 seconds 25 seconds to recharge you just unburrow it lands and you burrow and then you count to 10 and then the, the locusts are ready again it's like the actually absolute worst Hmm. I will I will answer this last question from Rasta2442. Are you gonna do the Harlem Shake? No. Because I was listening to Bauer 
almost a full year ago. I, I have been listening to Bauer and all that trap music. For any of you who don't know what trap music is, it's... has this really distinct buildup that has like uh, like no bass, no kick drum, and it's all just like hi-hats or, or sometimes snare. Um, and it builds up with a very sort of dance-ish rhythm, uh, a dance-ish structure, and then it drops into a very hip-hop structure after the drop. It's like a third hip-hop, a third dance-ish stuff, and a third dub. Uh, it's generally like a low hip hop beat per minute stuff. I've been, I've been like listening to a lot of it, and a lot of it's just dumpster shit awful. It's terrible. It's so bad. Um, but Bauer is good. B a a u e r. Bauer. Yeah. Um, Harlem Shake I thought was like an okay song. I like Dum Dum. I like his Move to the Ocean remix a lot more. And um, uh. I guess I would say part, part of me is mildly sad about the Harlem Shake videos because it feels like if I if I were a musical artist, would I want all my music attached to this meme where people just kind of get goofy? I don't know. Maybe he loves it, maybe he doesn't. But either way, trap is the genre of music. Uh, yeah. I'm done. I did a daily. Tomorrow, I'll come back for a daily in the in the after hours gaming league. Uh, I'll be done now. Bye. Thank you for watching. It was thrilling to have you. You're all great. Yeah.